All right, the other person at the center of this all business is the leaker Edward Snowden. It's an odd liberal libertarian coalition calling him a hero, but I call him a traitor, and I think he should be put away for several decades. Let's talk about that. We have Charles Cook from the National Review who wrote this column today, and we have Mark Thiessen of the American Enterprise, author of this op-ed in the Washington Post yesterday. Uh, Mark Thiessen, let me begin with you. I just want to do the Snowden thing sure. for one second. Is this guy sure. a hero or is he a traitor? What's up with this? He's a traitor and an admitted felon. I mean, this is a man who leaked classified information, uh, collaborated with foreign governments, apparently. Apparently, to try and to try and uh, to try and leak this information, and he exposed a program that is absolutely essential to protecting the United States of America. And on top of that, you know, he keep, the people or his his supporters are calling him a whistleblower. He actually hasn't exposed any kind of wrongdoing or any kind of abuse of the system. I mean, all he's done is exposed a lawful, constitutional, and vital national security program. He hasn't, for example, proved like he he says in interviews, "I could look at your emails." Well, he hasn't actually shown any evidence that anyone has looked at your emails or has listened to your phone calls. Mm. He hasn't done anything like that. So all he's done is exposed a classified program that we need to protect the country from the right. terrorists who are continue to try and Which attack. Which our enemies should not have known about. Charles Cook, that's exactly. the part. I mean, first of all, if Snowden was uh, so lily white on this, why is he fleeing to China? Who knows where he's going to go for asylum? I heard today Putin said he'd consider asylum in Russia. He knows he's in trouble. Now, what's your take on this guy Snowden? Is he a traitor or a hero? Uh, I'm not sure he's either. I, I, I think it's possible to be alarmed at what Snowden revealed, which is far more uh, damaging than uh, what was just implied, without necessarily having to lionize him or, or hate him. Um, we can be seduced by words like legal and constitutional and warrant all day, but the reality is one has to ask what is oversight, what is a warrant, what is constitutional? Um, we have here a situation in which the American government is uh, writing warrants that apply to 100 million people. Now, that is not the intent now of the warrant system. I don't understand that, no. 100 million people. I don't understand well, that. Look, the, the, uh, this is all about data mining and it's about digital eavesdropping if if the special court called FISA decides that there's probable cause that there's a terrorist activity or some enemy activity. The rest of us, they're not, they're not eavesdropping on my phone calls. They're not looking into my emails. Well, FISA, the FISA court, which is sometimes used as if this is a, a knockout blow, well, FISA approved it. Firstly, FISA approves pretty much everything, 99.97%. But even if you say, well, that's because in 99.97% of cases, it's fine. Um, the, national, uh, the, the, the NSA is there um, to spy on foreigners. Now, there is an exemption which says that if a foreign spy is within the United States, they can be given permission to look into them. Are we really suggesting that that is similar to what we've learned in the last, the last week, where you know, hundreds of millions, tens of millions of Verizon customers are having their metadata collected by the NSA. It is totally outside of the remit of the NSA, and it's not what we regard as well, being normal in, in a Charles, system of Fourth Amendment privacy. All right, Mark, give you a quick answer, because then I want to move on to yeah. Clapper. Charles obviously doesn't understand how the program works. Nobody's emails are being read. Nobody's phone calls are being listened to in the United States if you're an American citizen living within the United States. What they are doing is, you know, remember after 9-11, we were accused of failing to connect the dots. What the NSA is doing is collecting the field of dots, the, 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 phone, the phone records, not the content of the communications, who called when and where, and those dots are not touched unless we have a terrorist raid somewhere and find a new dot, a phone number of a terrorist. And then they go back and plug that dot into the field of dots to see who's connected. If you're not calling that terrorist in Afghanistan or Yemen or some other place, your dot is not touched. I mean, it's they collection. They have no authority to do it. It's, and it's all it's collection, not content. That's my understanding of exactly. this whole thing. It's, and there's and a big difference between collection well, and content. But I got, I got to move yeah. on. We could argue this all night. Charles, I want to give you a chance. Did Clapper lie? This is a very important point. You wrote a very compelling comment. I mean, Ron Wyden, Senator Wyden, asked him a very straightforward question. Uh, uh, and does the NSA collect any type of data at all? Or are millions of hundreds of millions of Americans? He can't be clearer than that. And Clapper says no. And I noticed in the clip that we played, I hadn't seen this before, when Clapper said no, he was looking down at his paper. He did not look at Senator Wyden when he made that answer. All right. Do you think Clapper lied?
He absolutely lied. If lying means anything, he lied. He was given one day's notice of this question. He's then asked the question, and it said, any data at all. They didn't say, is he reading emails? They didn't say, is he spying? He said, any data at all? And Clapper said, no, sir. And then he said, unwittingly. And then he went on to say, the NSA can't do this anyway because it only looks at foreigners. That was a, a flat-out lie. And it is worrying in a country when the National Intelligence Services are subordinate to Congress that they would lie to the Congress, which is, which is primary. And Mark Thiessen, uh, it, it also, I mean, I, I will count myself basically as a supporter uh, of this whole national security sure. apparatus, okay? But when, if Clapper is lying, and, and boy, that, that whole scene, he's, he wouldn't, look at, he wouldn't look, look at Wyden's face when he answered it. You know, it's like the IRS. It, it, there's a trust issue here that we cannot yeah. overlook. The IRS, we know, lied and repeatedly lied and got into people's knickers they should never have gotten into, but that's for another segment. All I'm yeah. saying is, for this Pfizer to work and NSA thing to work, we got to have ironclad integrity. What's your take on Clapper? Yeah, I think Charles's fire is misdirected. I think the outrage is that Senator Wyden asked the question in an open forum. I mean, this, what, what Senator Wyden knew the answer to the question, he knew that the answer was classified, top secret information, and he knew that Director Clapper couldn't answer the question in a public forum, and he asked it anyway. He was either trying to embarrass him or trip him up or force him to disclose classified information, which is, as a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee with a top secret security clearance, who's sworn to protect classified information, is a wholly irresponsible and shameful thing reaction? to do. And so Clapper couldn't have answered the question because he would have been confirming a classified covert operation, uh, which Wyden knew, and that's why he but, asked the question uh, to put him in that well, court right, in the first place. You answer that. My What's reaction your... to that is that the Senate is in charge of oversight of this organization. This organization was doing something, as I've said, and I'm afraid I disagree respectfully with your other guests. It's not acceptable in this country. He asked him a question as to whether it was going on. He clearly didn't know. Or, uh, many, members, many members of Congress did not know whether that was going on or not, despite what the president has said. And he was yeah. lied to, and that is worrying in a free republic. Mark, why yes, just let me ask you a question. This may be a detail, but why ask a question like that in an open hearing? Why not do it exactly. in a closed hearing? It seems That's to me exactly that, that, would, that was the biggest mistake made. So they forced Clapper exactly. into a position he didn't want to be in. Exactly. I mean, what you, you've hit the nail on the head. The Senate Intelligence Committee has closed hearings and closed sessions where they conduct oversight, Charles. They, are, they conduct oversight. They don't conduct all oversight of intelligence in an open forum. Mm -hmm. And he had already asked and gotten the question answered in a closed session. And what he did was then take it out into an open session and try and force the DNI to expose classified information in an open setting. It's a shameful thing to do for a member of the Senate right. Intelligence Committee. Our anger should be focused on why and not well, he, on he tried to get the DNI to admit doing something that it wasn't supposed to be doing. You and he I disagree on that. No, right. that's not. He Absolutely. It's lawful and he, and he so tried to expose a classified program. He has no right to do that. We'll he has no right back. to ask we'll that question. We'd we'll love to have you gentlemen back. We have more to